Good morning. Welcome, everybody, to our COVID-19 Global Conversation Series hosted by the Henry M. Jackson School of International Studies at the University of Washington in Seattle. Uh, thank you very much for joining us. Uh, I'm Danny Hoffman. I'm the Bartley Dobb Professor for the Study and Prevention of Violence um, and the Chair of the African Studies Program at the Jackson School. And today I am having a conversation with Awu Abdi Daher, a correspondent for Al Jazeera Arabic and the news anchor for uh, radio and TV Djibouti. And she is uh, speaking to us from Djibouti, um, where it is now late on a, on a Sunday afternoon. Uh, now, due to the format and time considerations, you'll, um, we won't go through uh, Abdi, uh, Abu Abdi's full biography, but you can find uh, information about uh, both of us on the, on the website series. And Awu, I just want to start by thanking you so much for joining us today. Um, I know you are incredibly busy, and this is a very um, tense and stressful time everywhere. So thank you so much for your time. Thank you for having me. Thank you. I'm so Danny. Great. And um, so I wonder if you could start off just by giving us a little bit of, of uh, context. I know the African Center for Disease Control has uh, uh, has said that Djibouti now has the, the highest infection rates uh, in East Africa. Could you give us a little bit of context for that and tell us a little bit more about um, where things stand today? Okay, uh, for Djibouti, who uh, those who are not, it's located in the east Horn, uh, Horn Af of Africa, uh, which is uh, the east of, of Africa. And now, as uh, many other countries, uh, the Djibouti registers uh, today and in uh, 15 uh, new cases, which mean the total are 1,023 uh, cases and uh, uh, there is uh, 411 uh, the total uh, recovery cases and uh, the number of deaths uh, are two. Uh, so, uh, according, uh, Danny, uh, to the African Center of Diseases Control and Prevention, uh, Djibouti registered the highest prevalence rate of COVID-19 in uh, the East African countries, and that means uh, every uh, every uh, 100 inhabitants, there is uh, 9, 19, uh, 98 uh, of uh, cases uh, of inhabitants who are uh, who are uh, who are affected by the the virus uh, COVID-19, and it's also important to mention that Djibouti are the total inhabitants of Djibouti are less than one millions, and you can see that the the the, the, the how the uh, the virus. Uh, spread really rapidly uh, in Djibouti, and more of uh, of of you and maybe others were asking themselves why, especially here in Djibouti, and because the the reason why the the virus spread really quickly and rapidly here, it's because first of all uh, there is not respect of the restrictions uh, and the general lockdown here in in Djibouti, and uh, the other reason reasons are um, the neighborhood, many of them uh, were continue their life, uh, their, uh, their routine as there is nothing happened. Um, and the third is, are um, many people here, like uh, we can say more than 50% of the inhabitants uh, are uh, small business awareness, uh, owners and vendors. Uh, uh, they they um, they sell their uh, their product in the streets or in the in the market. Uh, so it's hard for them to stay at home and to respect uh, the lockdown. So uh, they go out and uh, and to make a general activity income, especially now in, in Ramadan, which is really 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 hard to respect the quarantine uh, made by, by the government. Great. Okay, thank you. Can, can you say a little bit more about the uh, just the, the general atmosphere, um, especially, like you said, with the beginning of Ramadan, we're in sort of an unusual uh, period mm -hmm. anyway. How, uh, you know, are, are, can you say a little bit more just how, how it feels on the streets of Djibouti? It's, it's really, really weird because 
the atmosphere is, uh, is, is absolutely different uh, at the normal uh, Ramadan. Uh, we go uh, at the most the mosque to pray, especially the Tarawih, which is uh, the uh, after uh, it's uh, the prayer, especially uh, for Ramadan. Um, there is um, all the all the mosque uh, were closed because uh, to to stop spread of the virus. Um, there is uh, less than people to go out out outside of their home, and it's really like we are really sad. Uh, the atmosphere, uh, the okay, right now because of uh, the the corona uh, virus. And most of, of the people try to uh, do their be better to, to respect the, the, the lockdown, but it's hard uh, for, for us, for us as people, but also for those who work daily uh, to have a little small, uh, small businesses, uh, especially the businesses related to Ramadan, like uh, those who uh, sell uh, fruits uh, uh, and vegetables, and those who are uh, sells uh, 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 like uh, they have a mini mar uh, small market who sells uh, uh, many other things. Uh, like dishes and all that stuff, and those all markets are closed uh, to uh, because of the lockdown, and the atmosphere is absolutely uh, really uh, different right now. Yeah, I can imagine. Well, mm -hmm. could could you say a little bit more? I, I know that uh, I believe it was uh, two days ago. President Gay uh, made a, a statement that sounded quite like quite a strong uh, uh, condemnation of people. Uh, uh, activities during the during the lockdown that uh, essentially he 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 faulted the the citizens of Djibouti for not uh, yeah. not observing the lockdown. Could you put that into mm -hmm. context for us a little bit and say a little bit more about that statement? Sort of what uh, how it was received? How uh, uh, um, just give us a little bit more of the political side of this? Uh, well, he he tried to. Um, uh, to call all people to respect uh, the lockdown made by the government because of the safety of uh, of everyone. Uh, and the second thing is it's because the uh, health system will not uh, not give the assistant care for all people who are well affected by the virus if uh, this number will continue to increase. And that will really uh, cause a lot of damage for the public uh, health system here in Djibouti. Uh, because uh, we have like two hospitals uh, as a current, they may for the quarantine uh, for those who are infected by the uh, the, the corona COVID-19. And if this number will continue to grow, uh, this uh, uh, hospital will not uh, able uh, to uh, get those people, and there is less of uh, beds, for beds, and less for uh, medicines. So that's why the president really urged all people the important to stay at home and to respect the, the lockdown. Uh, other than that, uh, the 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 situation will get worse and the government even uh, the uh, uh, the uh, all those uh, associations who uh, gives help to the government and to give donations will not be able uh, to uh, give the, the assistant health to those who are infected by uh, the uh, uh, covid-19 great okay thank you. and so um, speaking of, of other actors on the on the uh, uh, the landscape in Djibouti, I think uh, at least for most Americans who are uh, what they know about Djibouti is that it is the site of the only permanent U.S. military base on the African continent, and that's also uh, there's also a large French military base, and now China's uh, uh, the, a Chinese base in Djibouti as well. Are those that that foreign military presence in the country is that uh, factoring into the the COVID uh, um, situation at all? 
No, at all. Um, I see um, most of uh, those uh, confirmed cases are, or most of them are Djiboutians, and most of them uh, are affected by because they uh, were contact with him or another person who are uh, already affected by the COVID-19 and which is really um, unfortunately most of them who came out of, of another country uh, did not stay at home uh, at, at least 14 days uh, to just make sure that he's not affected by the, the COVID-19 but he went out uh, continue his life, uh, go working, and after a few days, he uh, feel the symptoms of the uh, the virus. And that day, um, between the day he came out and the day he felt the symptoms, he were contacted by many many person. That's why the uh, the virus spread very quickly and very rapidly. But I the uh, the different bases include the U.S. or the Chinese or uh, the other bases are locked down earlier. Uh, before uh, the the first cases uh, were uh, before the first cases was confirmed here in Djibouti, so the the uh, the after the uh, the foreign bases are nothing to do with uh, with the the spread uh, the the virus cases who, who sp uh, the virus coronavirus who spread really quickly in Djibouti. Great. Okay. Yes. So so you're. You're really, as a journalist, as a working journalist, you're really seeing this unfold um, in a very direct way. So first, could you tell us a little bit about how most Djiboutians learn about, uh, wh how do they get their news, first of all, about corona? Is it is it radio? Is it television? Is it internet? No, um, the, the Minister of Health made a um, regular statement uh, through uh, the televisions, radios, and newspapers. Uh, so it's uh, an official statement made by uh, the, the, the Minister of Rhinos, or most of the time is uh, the Minister of, uh, of Health who made the official statement. Uh, the confirmed cases, the death, even the recovery, uh, to just avoid the fake news spread uh, through the uh, media, the uh, network, or through the internet. So, uh, confirmed cases is through official uh, official statement made by the Minister of Health. Okay, and are those are those rumor networks? Uh, are they are they quite strong in Djibouti? As they they seem to be in so many places right now. Uh, well, now uh, when the minister made the uh, the daily statement, uh, made the the rumors and the fake news less, uh, because the people just stay uh, to make sure the officials uh, news and the officials numbers of uh, those who are affected by the coronavirus by uh, the Minister of Health and that make uh, really, um, the people may really uh, feel, tr they trust more the official uh, official statement than the rumors. Okay, great. Now, yes. And could, could you tell us a little bit about your personal experience as a journalist working in these times? How does it, uh, uh, how, how has it impacted both your working practice and then just a little bit of uh, uh, how it how it feels to be doing uh, doing this work right now? Well, it's really special. It's really special uh, circumstance because we are not like uh, it's, uh, for me. It's first time, and I think more most of uh, of journalists to handle uh, these situations, even to handle with the informations and make sure to uh, separate the rumors, the fake news. The real informations, because, um, like for example, if the statement of the Minister of Health uh, be late, late two hours, or get late like two, three hours, um, then the rumors continue to spread really quickly. Like there is 20, 20 deaths. Uh, there is a lot of uh, another rumors say that there is a uh, 23 death, and the people. Uh, try to really, really, really confirm th those cases and everything's were 
work, go quickly and really uh, work fastly. So my, my my role as a journalist is just to stay really calm and uh, try to make sure that this information, uh, be sure that this inform uh, that this information is come from uh, official official side, even if it's uh, a, a uh, news uh, news uh, uh, news uh, news from any others or for Brian's uh, news is, or it's a statement made by uh, the responsible or the ministry. So it's hard. But for me, as a personal in a personal, it's really, really, uh, really, uh, really stressful uh, because I have a family, I have relatives, and I make sure that uh, I have to be safe uh, for me, but not to bring the virus for my relatives, my family at home, who just stay at home because there is they they didn't do anything. Uh, to uh, to to what I'm doing, so I'm just to try to be safe because of me, but also because of my family. And are you have you had to alter the your news news gathering practices? Are, are you still able to go to the studio or to go out to do um, interviews, or or do you have you had to change the 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 basic uh, way that you do your job? Well, uh, I didn't change anything. I already made um, two, two TV report uh, for Al Jazeera about the uh, uh, situation here in Djibouti. Uh, and the thing, is, the, thing uh, the other report TV was about showing the cat, which, which is a, a, a common activity made by a lot of people and uh, the, um, the 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 cell activity those who are selling the cat uh, continue to sell the cat and uh, are um, among of those who are uh, uh, have to work uh, daily uh, and made by the uh, generate income activity uh, by selling that the cat so i made a report about them and uh, I made also about the uh, situations, uh, uh, the situation here in Djibouti. So my my job is not really change. I do a TV report if, uh, for for the TV uh, national TV here where I'm working, or for Al Jazeera. Uh, but I just uh, respect the instructions. Uh, and uh, to uh, and try to be to make myself safe, uh, to take uh, to respect the restrictions, and and I have to do my work as a journalist. So now nothing. It's not really really. There is not much thing changed in my life compared uh, before. Okay. And do you, do you feel like are are the people that you're speaking with about this are they? Um, any any more or less uh, hesitant do you think to speak with you um, about this or do you think people are is there a, a general sense that people feel like they can um, uh, you know that they can they can uh, work with journalists to try to, to get a sense of what the the situation is like well m more of them are not really conscious about the danger of COVID-19 uh, they make a laugh about uh, about the virus, they're like, oh, then the COVID. There is not the uh, they denying the, the 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 dangers. How this uh, this virus could be danger, and that's really made uh, our job. And even for the doctors and for who made this uh, the awareness uh, really hard the work because it's really hard to make them uh, understand how uh, this virus could uh, could uh, really spread quickly and could be danger for both or those who are really young and uh, the uh, those who are a uh, little bit uh, old at the same level they they are denying that uh, they are not uh, the un the covid would not affect them because they are young because it's hot uh, uh, the weather is hot uh, or even because uh, because uh, we are um, really uh, protected by by the god 
and that will not affect us. So uh, there is a lot. Of, uh, the, the reason why they are denying that it's really different, but uh, it's still really hard to make them understand uh, the danger, the how the the situation is really, really, really serious, and they have to understand uh, the the risk uh, of uh, the COVID nineteen. So would you say, do you think that's the, is that a majority of people that have still not, not quite accepted the, that, that this is a, a serious threat? I think uh, the, the, um, the number of uh, confirmed cases uh, talk itself, uh, how the people is ignore uh, the situation, how the people ignore uh, the danger, how the people ignore the risk of this uh, uh, COVID-19, uh, compared to Ethiopia, to Kenya, which are, they have more inhabitants, like 100 million, but us, we are less than million, and we register like 1,000, uh, 20, uh, 1,000, uh, 2,300 uh, cases. And that that shows how people are not really concerned about uh, about that. And can you say a little bit about what you think the, the long-term impacts of this could be? What, let's say a worst case scenario. How does this impact Djibouti's economy? How does it impact the political landscape in you know, a year, two years, five years. Well, the the really hard that the most people who will impact the this change, uh, the lockdown impact their life, their daily life. It's uh, those who are business, uh, small businesses, uh, small uh, businesses who owners market who sells um, uh, uh, products. Uh, so the, those are really uh, infected by the coronavirus. Uh, they struggle. Uh, you can even if you cross the, 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 the town and cross you, the road and you may most people who made them uh, is those who are um, who generate activity income daily. Uh, they are struggling uh, to live. Uh, they are struggling to make uh, a, an income, uh, an income uh, daily, and those who are really, really struggle uh, to live. Uh, but I think if we uh, if we uh, talk about the uh, uh, the economy of Djibouti, that will have a bad impact uh, because uh, uh, the the government locked down all the, the activities. Um, lock down all the people who made um, that uh, even if our economy is not um, we don't have a um, uh, natural resource uh, but we uh, all uh, our economy it depends on the port seas uh, so the port seas uh, working uh, but the government of uh, Djibouti decided to um, uh, to make to continue uh, the activity of port and uh, to make sure that uh, the restrictions is respected there. Uh, but here, but if we uh, if we talk about uh, the individuals that will have a direct impact of their their life, especially those who may who generate activity income uh, daily. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. Oh, Abi, I want to thank you so much for, for taking the, the time to speak with us and um, I certainly wish you, your family and everyone in Djibouti the, the best. I, I will uh, we'll certainly be, be keeping our eyes thank on you. what's happening there. And um, again, I just can't thank, thank you. Thank you. Uh, for those who, uh, who are joining us, thank you so much. And uh, you can find additional talks in our uh, COVID uh, conversation series on the UW uh, Jackson School website. Uh, thanks for, for being with us. Thank you. Thank you, Danny. And I really, I pray uh, for God, for those who are uh, affected uh, by the coronavirus, they will uh, uh, recover and they will uh, get home uh, really uh, quickly and really, really, and really, I, um, I hope you all the best and thank you for having me. Thank you so much.